Hello, and welcome to the Science Foundation Ireland Centre for Research Training and Machine Learning annual industry engagement event. I'm Brian McNamee, the director of the centre, and I'm going to give you a quick overview of what the centre is all about and the different ways that companies can engage in the work that we're doing. Now, what I want to start with are three small examples that illustrate for me the importance of a, a CRT in machine learning. The first one is a good one um, and illustrates how far along machine learning has come. So in recent times, most of us have gotten used to spending a lot of our time in online meetings. And just a few months ago, Google Hangouts added a feature to their platform for online meetings that did real-time automated closed captioning. So as you're speaking, you can see subtitles doing a pretty good job um, of typing out what it is that you're saying. Now, this is based on pretty interesting machine learning models and is something that probably only four or five years ago was still pretty much the stuff of science fiction. So I think this is a really nice example of how far we've come with machine learning today. Now, the second example um, is one that shows how hard it is to deploy really effective machine learning solutions. So this is a screenshot of the coverage of a Scottish Championship soccer match between Air United and Inverness Caledonian Thistle. And at Air United's ground, they were using an automated camera system. Um, that's a, a really nice idea for grounds where maybe they don't, uh, don't have the, the budget to deploy a full camera crew where they could use a camera that would automatically track the ball around the pitch. Now, unfortunately, uh, viewers of this match, instead of uh, seeing the, the action of the game, were treated to whatever it is, about an hour and a half of video of the linesman and the job that the linesman was doing. Now you can see in this screenshot, there's no ball uh, visible here. And the reason for that is that the, the camera, automated camera tracking system got a little bit confused. Uh, the linesman being a, a Scottish gentleman, uh, slightly pale, he's, he's quite bald, and therefore his head to this automated tracking system looked awful like a football. So instead of tracking the ball, the system tracked his head for pretty much the entire match. And that's just a really nice example of how difficult it is to deploy really good machine learning systems. Uh, they can be quite confused pretty easily. The last um, picture here is of Boris Johnson, the, the UK Prime Minister. Um, and this is a picture of him talking about the system that was put in place to automatically produce uh, A-level results. Now, that wasn't really a machine learning system, uh, but I think the phrase that he used of the mutant algorithm is one that we're going to hear more and more of. Um, this, for me, illustrates the importance of deploying machine learning systems in a way that's fair and equitable and transparent, which were all of the issue, all issues that arose in the discussions about that system that was released. So for me, these three examples capture why we need to have a, a center for research training in machine learning just now. We're at a point in time where the things that we can do at machine learning are bigger, better, faster, more than we could ever do before, but it still remains a real challenge to deploy machine learning systems that are, are useful in practice. And if we are going to deploy machine learning systems in practice, well, we have to think very carefully about the societal impacts that they're going to have. So the Centre for Research Training and Machine Learning has been designed to address those needs. Now, to give you a little history of the centre, we started in March 2009. We engaged in a process of talking to, I think it was about 30 companies across Dublin and a little more broad around Ireland about the needs that they saw for PhD level graduates in machine learning and what it would take for those graduates to be really effective if they were to join R&D teams. Because underpinning the center is a recognition that our graduates won't all stay in academia, they'll go out to make a difference uh, in companies. So we designed a program taking all that into account and in October 2019, we had 24 new PhD graduates join the center. Those are, sorry, 23 new PhD candidates, I should say. Those candidates uh, are about one year into their studies at the moment and are working across all aspects of machine learning from fundamental algorithms and computer vision and natural language processing to applications in recognizing potholes in the roads to monitoring athletes and how they're doing their training exercises. Like everybody else, in early 2020, um, the, the COVID-19 scenario had a pretty severe impact on our centre. We moved to working from home, but the resilience that our PhD candidates have shown throughout that process has been, has been really impressive. We continued with recruitment, and just in September in this year, 
we recruited another 30 PhD candidates to form cohort two of our center. Uh, this photo is a little different. So we're all looking out through Zoom windows instead of being all in one place together. Um, but so far, the engagement with the, the bootcamp program that we do as the first stage in the program has been really, really fun. And, and, and I think it's, it's working pretty well so far. So that means that right now we have over 50 PhD candidates working all across machine learning within the center. Now the whole program the center is defined, is designed to amplify the cohort effect that we get from having this large volume of students. So we can do things that you just couldn't do um, with smaller PhD groups. Underpinning the whole thing though is also deep industry engagement. So throughout our program, we have opportunities uh, for companies to engage with the center through, for example, defining the research themes that, that we work on, engaging with the bootcamp, delivering things like training and seminars uh, to the students during the bootcamp and throughout the rest of the program, deeply engaging in collaborative research projects. So a small number of our students work very closely with company partners on the research that they do, and also through placements. So all of our students will, at some point during their PhD studies, spend about four months on a placement with one of our industry partners working on machine learning work in that company. And that whole thing is designed to build PhD graduates with the knowledge, skill set, experience, and mindset to be really successful when they complete their programs and go out to be leaders in machine learning in the industrial ecosystem, both in Dublin and Ireland and across the rest of the world. And over the lifetime of the center, we'll have about 120 PhD graduates. And this group of 120 academically outstanding industry ready PhD graduates is probably the most significant impact that the Center for Research Training in Machine Learning is going to have. In order for us to achieve all of those impacts, um, we do build opportunities for close industry engagement with the center. And there's two main models for this, what we call a cohort partner, which through which the primary form of engagement is hosting a student on a placement of approximately four months or what we call a strategic partner, which allows companies to more deeply collaborate on one research project. So they're right there from the start, working with one of our PhD candidates to define the research problem that's gonna be addressed. And they're supporting, collaborating, engaging with that research pro project all of the way through. We're always interested in talking to new companies about becoming either cohort partners or strategic partners. And I suppose that's a big part of, our, of what today's event is all about. The rest of today's event, uh, we're going to hear interesting talks from lots of our different PhD candidates. So in particular, two of our cohort two candidates, Neve Belton and Jack Nichols, are going to talk about a project they worked, they've worked, they been working on with the rest of their cohort on improving contact tracing for COVID-19 using machine learning. It's really interesting work there. And then we're going to hear research snapshots from all of our cohort one students. So like I say, those PhD candidates are about one year in, are gonna tell us about what they've been doing so far. We've grouped those under machine learning for language, machine learning applications, deep learning for computer vision and explainable machine learning. So thanks very much for attending today and I hope it's gonna to prove to be a really interesting event.